Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for the second episode of our Ultimate Base 2.0 playthrough. And guys, you exceeded my expectations by so much. I thank you so much for the support on the first episode. You made an incredible difference to the reach of this video and here is actually the proof. Thank you so much, I'm really, really grateful. So today, instead of another video that I planned, we are gonna continue with the second episode. At the end of the previous episode, we finished building this bottle emptier and as it just happens, there is somewhere a bottle on the floor with polluted churmy water. Ah, right there it is behind the dirt and it probably already started to off gas. If we check out the gas overlay, we now have a couple of pockets with polluted oxygen. They also contain a bunch of germs and this bottle would now continue to off gas unless we do something about it. So what we want to do is get this bottle emptier and tell them to put the polluted water in there. It's then gonna accumulate here at the bottom and it's still gonna off gas. However, we can do something against that. We just have finished the plumbing research so we can get into something else. What I'm most interested in at the moment is the deodorizer. I'm also interested in acquiring the airflow tile as well as the insulated tile. We'll talk about that more in the future. Also some of the other things are gonna be useful to us. But let's get started with the deodorizer. We can actually use that to convert polluted oxygen into normal oxygen. Very useful. In order to do that, we will have to sacrifice a little bit of sand. So it might not be a bad idea to track our sand usage as well. And as mentioned, we unlocked the plumbing. So let's get into plumbing and we want to set up a liquid pump right here. I want to get rid of this water here at the bottom. We're going to drag a pipe. Let's just drag it through here for the time being. And I actually want to bring this to approximately this point. What we're going to do is wall this off for the time being. We're also going to take apart some more stuff here. Maybe even this out. That would not be the worst of ideas. Make this water pool just a tiny bit larger. Obviously, we will also need to power the pump. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. And then last but not least, we're going to require a liquid vent to get rid of the stuff. Now, can I hop over here conveniently? Let's maybe do it at this point and then we're also going to get rid of all of this stuff here. Now, I don't want an accident, so I'm going to make sure they actually build this wall first. Just increase the priority a little bit with the interface or hitting the P shortcut. By the way, at this stage we are now, we can take it a little bit slow. We can start to explore our surroundings. We want to know what we are dealing with in terms of terrain features. Hopefully we will also find some geysers or vents. If we have a look upstairs, there's actually already one cool steam vent available to us that is going to be mighty useful for the acquisition of new fresh water. Otto earned a skill point. Phenomenal. It's his second skill point actually already. We could dive into improved farming, however I really think it's not necessary just yet. One skill I'm gonna give all the duplicants is improved carrying. Look at that, plus 400 kilograms carrying capacity is just absolutely phenomenal considering they can carry like 80 kilograms or 120, I'm not sure what it is but it's much less. So I think I'm rather gonna give him this skill, especially because right now with our priorities we have him set to also collect some stuff and resupply everything until we have a duplicate more suited to do this job. So as I wanted to say, my goal for today's episode is gonna be to explore a little bit but also to secure another source of oxygen. And I actually want to go with a different idea you guys gave me in the previous season. Using the polluted water and its off gases, I'm actually kind of intrigued about that idea. There is another research completed. Airflow tile is already there. This is gonna be mighty useful. If we set up a couple of airflow tiles, the distribution of oxygen and carbon dioxide is gonna become so much easier. So maybe if we find the time every now and then we can exchange some of these tiles with airflow tiles in order to help the oxygen exchange. At the bottom here I want to keep going with my platforms and I'm actually going to build the platforms first or what you can do is still dig everything out but give the platforms priority. This is going to make sure we always build the platforms first and the resources are not going to drop all the way down. Oh, we got a new printable available. What do we have? May right here could actually become our rancher. Already comes with suit wearing but ranching is going to be more important. Food morale bonus, that's just fine. Lyra here has ranching as well, however, if somebody is ranching and you have a couple of ranches, they cannot take care of anything else, so I think suit wearing might just be more advantageous to us. 
Yeah, let's just freaking do it. We're gonna print a new duplicate that is gonna become my rancher for the time being. He is not gonna be ranching, however, he's gonna focus on everything else we don't have a duplicate for just yet. So like, Otto doesn't need to focus on tidying anymore, May can actually do that. Maybe now we are at this point where we can disallow a couple of things, like cooking is gonna be very specific, doctoring extremely specific, and the ranching is also gonna be very specific. As a matter of fact, farming is also specific, so only Otto should do the farming and then May should do the ranching. However, right now, as I said, we don't have anything to ranch just yet. So for now, May is also gonna take care of tidying, that is gonna be important. She has also learned a skill point that I'm gonna put into farming because that's the way to get to critter ranching. And I want her to reach that stage very soon because the first resource we need to replenish is coal and there's a way to do that using critters. One thing I forgot is to put May into a different schedule. I'm gonna wait until the sleep time is over and then I'm gonna put them into the second shift. There we go, already awake again, so you go into the second shift. And here we go, my liquid pump is all installed and we can now see the liquid is going into the main liquid chamber. And we can have a closer look at that with the plumbing overlay. Jean just earned her first skill point. No, it's actually a guy, you might be right. A anyways, they earned another skill point that we could invest into field research or astronomy. Field research at this point might be very useful since it allows us to analyze geographical features. And with that I mean the steam vent specifically, we can analyze it and determine its active and dormant phases. I might also want to get rid of everything here so we can clean this completely up. There it is, research completed and we have access to the deodorizer as well as the carbon skimmer. The carbon skimmer we could use in the beginning to get rid of a certain amount of the CO2. And then as mentioned the deodorizer we're gonna place nearby here. So all of the off gases that are potentially coming up will be converted into pure and nice oxygen. I'm actually also gonna build a ladder here so they can finish the job there. And we also need some power for the deodorizer. It's not gonna be a lot but it needs to be hooked up. Currently we have over 60 tons of sand so we can definitely last a couple of cycles using the deodorizer. But eventually we'll need a replacement for the sand. At this point, going upwards, we need to be a little bit careful. There is some chlorine all over the place. We don't necessarily want that in our base. We also don't want the water directly in our base. This should all be a little bit controlled. Also, we want to maybe swap our material that we use to build the ladders. Actually, I still have plenty of sandstone here, but eventually there's going to be no more sandstone. And of course, we then want to swap the material to something that is available nearby. So for now, I'm only taking out the tiles that I know for sure are not going to open up this place here. So I have full control over it. In the meantime, we can keep on clearing up a couple of materials to get a better overview and make it nice and cozy. We can clearly see this is off-gassing and every now and then the deodorizer is gonna pick up a pocket just like now and it's gonna convert sand into clay. Clay is also useful and the deodorizer is one of the most reliable ways to get it. Some of our storage bins are already full. What I like to do at this point is just take everything out of the storage and then re-enable them. This way we have the items nicely collected on the floor right here. They're not gonna be spread all over the place but we have new room for the storage bin. Eventually this is also going to help your frame rate. If you stack up the items, you can vastly improve it. Alright then, let's get back into the research. I also would like to have access to the insulated tile that is going to be especially important when it comes to heat distribution. For instance, if we check the temperature overlay, we can see the base is nice and cool at the moment, around 26 or so degrees. However, as soon as we zoom a little bit to the right or left, we can see there are different temperatures. And right here, for instance, it's going to be extremely hot and we don't want this in our base Insulated tiles are the way to prevent this from happening. Ren just earned another skill point. We could at this point go into super hard digging. However, we already have Marie with the super hard digging skill. So what we're actually going to do is get into improved carrying. Ren of course is also building the entire time and this way they will be able to bring more materials to the building sites. In terms of exploration, my guess is we will find another steam vent in here. At least that's what it looks like. There are also these thimble reed plants that we are going to utilize in order to create Atmo suits. A very important item in the beginning. I think what I would like to do is plan out the next contraption. We're going to build a couple of ladders, remove some of the terrain features here. And what I would like to see happen here is your suggestion from the comment section. 
If we have a look at this polluted water, for instance, this has a nice temperature. It's not quite too hot, just 30 degrees. And we also have a whole bunch of polluted oxygen that we could convert into normal oxygen. We need to be a little bit careful when it comes to slime. We might actually want to collect the slime in a pool of water. Because if slime off-gasses too much, you're gonna end up with a whole bunch of slime lung in your air. And you don't really want that. It's not the worst sickness, but it's definitely bad enough that you don't want to provoke it. So I think the next step I'm gonna take is I'm gonna move the ration box a little further down. This is probably the last step I want to take with the ration box. However, I would like to open up everything. I also would like to continue my ladder system. Well, actually, we don't really want that. But yeah, we can uh, deconstruct this ration box and get it installed right here. I don't want it further away from the eating area so they don't have to walk too much. And yeah, if possible, I would like to know what we can find over here. I'm just gonna dig a little bit to the right in order to uncover what we have there. At the moment, this cool steam vent is active. I'm gonna go in there as soon as it's dormant and then hopefully we'll be able to analyze it quickly. I'm also gonna keep on cleaning things up a little bit, just floor by floor. We're making good progress with the water here. As soon as we're done here, we should be able to continue down. Now let's have a look at the new material. Nothing really too concerning. I want to make sure that once we dig up the first slime, it actually goes into my storage bin underwater. So maybe just in preparation for this, I'm also gonna already install a couple of storage bins. We're gonna need quite a few storage bins with the amount of slime we're digging up. And maybe if we do something like this, the duplicants don't always have to get wet when they get rid of the slime. The insulated tile research has been completed, which is wonderful. I think I might actually already make use of that since there is heat coming from the right side. Now let's actually think. What we want to do is utilize the polluted water off gassing, convert it into oxygen and then let it flow into our base. That was the idea. For now, I guess we can do this on the top here. It doesn't matter what type of insulated tile you take for this, only if it comes to really hot temperatures, it is gonna matter. The material you're using to build those. So what I would like to achieve is get polluted water into storage compartments. Then as soon as we have them full, we want to remove them in order to get a whole bunch of polluted water bottles. These bottles are then gonna produce polluted oxygen that we can convert directly into normal oxygen and therefore we can kind of live off the polluted water, which is gonna be much less resource intensive than using algae for the diffusers. But in order to achieve that, we have to research even more. I'm gonna need access to the liquid reservoir right there. Let's say for now we're gonna go with approximately three liquid reservoirs. That means I should be able to add another wall as soon as this. Actually, let's give us one more free space so we can also set up a ladder to get up and down. And I probably want to make this at least two levels high. We're gonna keep on digging. I just want to make sure I don't dig up the slime just yet. Maybe another set of ladders can go here and voila. Yes, wonderful. Get that built. At the moment, they always get wet. They lose time when they shake themselves off the water and also lose a little bit of morale. Just temporarily, but it's unnecessary. If you can avoid getting them wet, do that. Alright, with this new system in place, we should be able to dig up our first slime. Let's see where we want to do that. We're not quite ready here at the bottom, so I'm guessing I'm gonna first poke through here in order to start collecting the polluted water, bring it down into our reservoirs. Duplicants can actually also breathe the polluted oxygen. They will be slowed down a little bit by the yucky lungs debuff. But it's not really that bad. In the swamp start, you have to deal with that all the time. Anyways, to get things out of the way, I'm already gonna start setting everything up. We are gonna need a pipe. The pipe can actually lead directly into the room we're starting to build. And we can also already start to set up the power. So this just needs to be connected to here, I guess, for now. We already got new duplicants. However, not anybody I would like to take on board just yet. I'm sorry, we're gonna go for the sandstone. There we go, we actually uncovered it. It is also a cool steam vent. That is actually really promising. Also looks like it's got a nice output. But yeah, both of them are active at the moment, which means there's nothing we can do to analyze them without Atmos suits at least. Another research completed, we have access to the liquid reservoir. Let's check that out. We require some metal to build it. And I guess for now, we can just place three of them. That should be good. We're gonna use our pipe to get into the input slot of each reservoir. 
If we lead it straight through all of the inputs like this, it's gonna fill up the first reservoir, then the second, then the third one. We could also do it in a manner such as this, for instance. This would mean that each second liquid packet is gonna go into a different direction at each intersection. So the first reservoir would still fill up the first, but only because it has the intersection that takes 50% of all the incoming material. This is not important in today's contraption, however, eventually we will have to be mindful of details like this. Alright then, the next step would be to set up a whole bunch of airflow tasks and on top of these airflow tasks we want the odorizers to take care of all the potential polluted oxygen we encounter. Of course we use airflow tasks, otherwise the oxygen is not gonna make it out of there. So the odorizers go on top of that, which also means we're gonna need more power in this room. I guess we can take it from below here, then go up through all of the deodorizers. My suspicion is we're gonna need more than one row of deodorizers. I'm already gonna prepare two rows of deodorizers. This might seem like a little bit of a waste of sand, but I was really intrigued by the idea and currently we have 80 tons of sand available to us. Checking out the deodorizer, it takes 133 grams per second of filtration medium. Multiplied by a dozen deodorizers, we could get rid of our sand very quickly, so we have to keep that in the back of our head. Looks like we also got access to our first thimble reed seed. That means what I want to do is build another farm tile. I guess I'm just gonna do it right here. And I'm purposely only gonna go with one single farm tile. This should be enough in order to supply our Atmos suit construction for the foreseeable future, especially since we planned it so early, as it's still gonna take a couple of cycles for us to get to the atmosphere stage. In order to irrigate the thimble reeds, what we actually have to do is give them polluted water. We could theoretically go ahead and take the polluted water from our outhouses. However, I'm not an extremely big fan of that procedure, so what I'm gonna do instead is add another pitcher pump here. Let's just do it, yeah, let's do it here above the other pump. So at least we have the option to irrigate the plant. Actually, let me move everything one block more to the top. Otherwise, my duplicates cannot easily access it and I will have to make sure they build it in the correct order. Not really up for that. There it is, the first slime in our base right there. Yeah, we need to take care of that. So now we want to filter that in these crates and I want to make this priority 8. It doesn't matter if you get a tiny amount of slime lung in the joint, you just don't want it to accumulate too much. So right now, hopefully somebody is gonna be taking care of that. They're also gonna be full of slime germs, if I'm not mistaken, and they will be washing their hands afterwards, so all good. If we check out the germ overlay, we should be seeing that already in action. You can see there are a whole bunch of slime lung germs in the air. We wanna get rid of that stuff. Yes, Gene. Thank you very much. They actually didn't manage to get rid of all the germs completely. So we could think about setting up another wash basin or maybe go for a better solution in the future. Yeah, looks like we are actually done here. This is absolutely perfect. That means I can get rid of this pump again. It's not gonna suck up our power anymore. And we can clean this all up here. I'm gonna keep the liquid vent in place just in case we need it for another pool of water we find or so. To mop this up, by the way, the shortcut is M. And here we can see May taking care of it. Now we have a whole bunch of polluted oxygen in the joint already. That is the escaping air from here. The polluted oxygen is eventually gonna travel down. My duplicates are gonna breathe through it. But if we don't let it get out of hand, it shouldn't be that much of an issue. Actually, as everything is happening, we might be using another deodorizer here on the top just to get rid of the polluted oxygen that is unnecessarily coming out of here. I don't want the slime lung to spread too much and you can see it's actually thriving in polluted oxygen. At the moment, I'm quite happy with the amount of duplicants I have. In my opinion, you get duplicants way too often. I think I'm gonna go for the Oxyfern seed. That is not something I see often. But yeah, don't rush your duplicant count. It's really not worth it if you cannot keep it up. At the moment, my food is more or less stagnant, if not even decreasing. So before we cannot supply more farms or critter ranches, we're gonna be careful with our duplicant count. Alrighty, we're actually almost there. Now we need to make sure somebody is supplying these deodorizers. If we check the errands, we can see this is a supplying or life support command. So checking the priorities, maybe May could be taking care of that for a little bit. I'm also gonna up the life support priority, which should hopefully result in all the deodorizers being supplied. 
We can also see already that the polluted water is being pumped over. We have our first reservoir completely full. So at this point, for tidying purposes, I want to maybe clean out this room and then we can start deconstructing these reservoirs. This one here, we could already deconstruct some of the or most of the deodorizers here are already supplied. If you deconstruct something with liquid inside of it, it is actually going to be bottled up. At least this is my hope. Yeah, there we go. We have the polluted water concentrated in a bottle here. It is 5,000 kilograms and if we check the number here at the bottom, at the moment it's emitting 199.9 grams per second. This is not a whole lot. My deodorizers should be able to take care of that with ease. Even though the second reservoir isn't quite full yet, I'm already gonna deconstruct it and use the liquid inside to produce more polluted oxygen this way and we are gonna rebuild it right away again. Okay, this is actually wonderful. As long as we don't have too high pressure, the system should be producing fresh oxygen for us. I mean, at this point, we only have 24 tons of algae left. This is not enough for my comfort. I think I might already go ahead and remove the one oxygen diffuser. So we only keep the oxygen diffuser here at the bottom, which is also gonna stop as soon as we have enough pressure, which is around 1800 grams. And the same thing should happen over here. So off-gassing is only possible under a certain amount of pressure. Looks like I missed a skill point. Yes, Marie has another skill point. We currently have nine morale. That is not too shabby. Yeah, I think I can risk going into super duper hard digging with her. And therefore we should even be able to dig up materials like diamonds. Also, May got another skill point. I would like to get into ranching. We don't have anything with ranching just yet. I think I can wait one more skill point. So improved carrying it is, considering the tasks we are currently giving her. Maybe to make this a little bit smoother, I'm gonna up the life support even more to the highest priority. It's competing with ranching, but as mentioned, we don't have anything to ranch. But I would like to see this deodorizer topped off, thank you very much. And now we should also be able to get rid of this layer of polluted oxygen. Checking out the calories, we only have muckroot left, which is the food from the cracks. So currently we don't have enough mealwood. I'm gonna expand the farm as soon as we drop below the 30k mark. Some more printables, we're gonna go for the hatchlings. They can currently just roam around, especially the hatchlings on this level right here. We should have two of them. They occasionally will eat some of the stuff I have on the ground and they will poop out some coal for me. We will also have to adjust this uh, pitcher pump now. It was enough to serve the thimble reed and we already got our first reed fiber in the joint as well. But yeah, there we go. Now we will just have to observe a little bit whether or not we still have enough oxygen production with the new system. But I have a really good feeling about this, especially if we start to deconstruct a couple more of these reservoirs and get a higher output. So it's not quite as bad with the sand usage as I thought, because these are not constantly running. Maybe one row would have done the trick. So what I'm gonna do is fill up the rest of the reservoirs. Maybe we can keep some of this pool intact to collect the polluted water. We obviously also need a way to get over there. And then eventually maybe there are gonna be some more polluted water ponds we can tap into. But I think at this point I'm going to wrap up the second episode thematically. That is probably a good point to stop it. With that out of the way, thank you so much for watching and once again, thank you so much for the support on the first episode. I really hope this is gonna continue like this so we can make this the most epic playthrough on this channel thus far. Have a great time guys and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye bye.